Hello, this is MakerJay11, and here's my steam engine running real nice. So, yeah, I made a couple of modifications to a couple things. Um, no modifications to the steam engine, actually. Mostly just modifications to the burner. And I also added a radiator for the steam. So, all the steam is going out there, going into the radiator. A lot of warm air coming off that radiator. This is just a little radiator from a um, dehumidifier. But there's a lot of warm air coming off of that. And then I'm collecting the water in there, and I'm recycling that back to, um, oh yes, and I added a pump. So this is my reservoir here. This is actually not recycled water right now because I kind of ran out of recycled water. But this is the pump right here. The, um, it's a gear pump from a, oh, actually the water level is getting pretty low, so we'll fill it up. This is a gear pump from a, um, like a, a insecticide sprayer thing. It's inside the handle. I added a different motor because the motor that came with it was really wimpy. So, um, yeah, but it works really good. It does up to like 40 psi, so it's perfect for 30 psi. So here's my switch. It's running off of about uh, about seven volts or something like that. So here we go. Oh, I think something came unhooked. Yes. And you can see how fast it pumps, but it killed the pressure there. And it is sort of filling up. It's draining that real good. Yep, so there you go. You can see it's filling up. And if you just add little bit, bits of water at a time, it doesn't really um, kill the performance. And I'll shut it off there. So now it's got to heat back up. Because I pretty much killed the temperature there. And I also bought this valve here. But the from Harbor Freight for like four dollars or something so it was a pretty good deal I thought so I bought a, two of those valves they work really nice so now I can just turn it on turn it off really quick because that old valve that I had on there um, it was so annoying you had to turn the valve like so many times in order to um, <clears throat> open or close it so it was just really annoying so like you'd start burning your hand with steam and you couldn't turn it off so yeah um, I'll take the burner apart in a minute to show you guys what changes I made to that. But um, it's actually the blower fan that I had on there before. It kind of stopped working. I'm not sure why. I don't know if I overvolted it or what, but it just stopped working. So maybe it got overheated or something. So um, so I'm using a, a different fan, and this one actually seems to be working better because it can um, blow a little bit more volume. But I think I still need even more volume of air. And because I can't quite turn the gas up all as high as I want to, so I'd like to be able to turn it up even higher so that I can get really high or really fast heating up times and stuff like that. I actually tried to um, build my own fan. I was going to try to make a fan that was powered by steam, so I'd have a little steam turbine that would turn the fan to blow the um, air in. But this is my um, blower fan that I designed but it didn't really work because it couldn't um, handle enough capacity so I could set the bl burner real low to get a clean burn but any higher than that there wasn't enough air so um, but this is actually on the top of CD drives there's a little uh, circular cutout where the like magnetic um, part that sandwiches the disc in um, is inserted and that's what this little round disc was from I just cut a bunch of slots in the edge and bent them up but it works real good as a steam turbine, so maybe I'll turn it into a turbine, I don't know. But I'll, I'll show you guys that run in a minute. So, back to the water pump. So I added a little valve on here, um, just on the steam or er, the boiler. And so the water comes out of here, goes through the little gear pump that can do like 40 psi, depending on how much, what voltage you put into it. Um, so it does really good. And then, this is a little homemade check valve I made. So, I'll take that apart in a minute when we get some pressure well, I could turn it off right now, actually. So just close that valve, and I could try to screw the top off of that. I'll get to that in a minute. Let me run the steam engine here, because it's going to... Pressure valve, pressure release valve is going to blow. So, so I can just put that like that. Oops. Pull this off.
I can just throttle it on and off there. So awesome. Yeah, but I love this new valve. It cost me four dollars. Totally great investment. So, yeah. But it's just a little ball valve for actually for air compressors and things like that. It's like a drain valve or something, but it works fine with steam. I wasn't sure if the seals inside might melt, but it seems to be working just fine. So, that's good. Lots of steam. Now we're putting it into the radiator, putting some purified water out, distilled water. But really there's not many leaks in the steam engine once you have the steam going into there. Some steam leaking out around the um, valve there. Not much out of the piston though, but it does run quite nice. And the boiler still doesn't keep up. It drops to around uh, 8 PSI or so. And that's how it'll run the engine at full throttle. So it'll run it pretty down. Uh, let me open up the check valve for you guys. So as you can see, it's actually a bolt that I, um, a bolt and a big nut. So I actually have a little slot in the top there so you can screw it off. And there's just a washer soldered on top. There we go. Alright, so I'm actually gonna planning on making another one of these to make a piston pump so so I can run it with my steam engine. So this is just a whoop. I think my uh, burner just backfired or something. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, so it's just a washer soldered on a bit of bolt. And there's a little O-ring on there for a good seal. And then, this part is a big nut with a piece of metal soldered on the bottom. And there's a piece of rubber, like, tire tire inner tube um, just on the uh, little brass. Um, it's a brass rod that I drilled a hole through. And then I have a little spring pushing against it to get a better seal. But it really seals quite well because when you have 30 PSI of pressure going back on it, it doesn't go through the pump. It really doesn't leak at all, so it works really good. So let me put that back together. So. Oh, there goes the burner again. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It keeps, flames keep coming out of it. But I mean, it does seem pretty efficient because this piece of gutter pipe here, I have to keep the exhaust gases from going back into the intake. I mean, you can hold your hand on it. It doesn't get that hot, really. It's probably a little above boiling, maybe. I don't know. It's really not that hot, actually. So, I don't know if I have my... Yeah, maybe my gas isn't set right. Oh, you know what? I bet... I bet the uh, battery is starting to get low, and so the fan doesn't have enough voltage, so it's not getting quite enough um, air in there. That's what it is. So let me turn the gas down even more. And that's what, that explains why it's dropping to 5 PSI, too, because it's not getting a complete burn. So I'll shut it off here, and um, we can, uh, I can show you the new burner uh, intake. So, it's still not finished yet, but, yeah, so, got my natural gas line coming in over here, just a copper pipe, and there you go. So, it's a ring, and there's four holes on the inside pointing kind of into the um, burner tube. So, there's four holes in the little pipe, and then I have the fan, soda bottle, or soda can, and um, it's pretty simple. So, that's about it. <laughs> Not too complicated. 
and then the can is just JB welded onto the onto a piece of copper pipe, and then this copper pipe soldered to that copper pipe just for um, to make it rigid. So, but it seems to work pretty good. Sometimes it'll um, kind of backfire or um, start burning right here. So I. I'm not sure how I'm going to fix that, maybe putting a piece of screen or something in there. Um, but it's actually kind of cool when it does that because you can actually see the flame is like a tornado because um, from the fan it makes a rotating um, air column so it kind of makes the flame rotate as well in there. It's kind of neat to see it do that but it has to be the right temperature and then it does that. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to show you guys the steam turbine. So here we go. So I've got my steam here. Just killed all my pressure. Alright, here we go. Let me grab something to hold this with. It's my pliers. I don't know where I put my pliers. Here we go. Here's my pliers. And we'll let 30 psi of steam turn this little turbine. One, two, Three, here we go. going pretty good there at the, at the start. doesn't look like any of the blades bent or anything, but it sounded like it was getting really out of um, uh, balance there at the end. The water, when you open it up all the way, a lot of water gets out of the boiler and that's what really slows it down a lot because it kind of when there's a little blockage of water in the um, pipe it um, really slows the steam down I suppose that's probably why but I'm surprised we didn't put the uh, burner out with all that steam going over here we'll turn the natural gas off and I'll show you what the what this fan was actually for so I was originally going to have um, the fan inside of here that's what I designed it for so the fan was going to go inside there, and it was going to be kind of like a squirrel cage fan, sort of. And here I have another can here. Um, that one's attached to something. Kind of, kind of a similar idea to this, but I didn't really want to use this plastic one because, um, well, actually this was an afterthought. The plastic one probably melt if it um, backfired or something, because that's kind of what happened to the little squirrel cage fan I was using before. So. Or blower fan. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll use this for something else. Maybe I'll make a little turbine out of it. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So, that is my steam engine. That's about it. Thanks for watching.